If you've had any issues with anime over the past year, the fall season is sure to mend your broken heart, as it concludes this year of anime with the best season of For Anime Goodies. The anime lineup fall had brought the return of some of the biggest anime in the past decade, with plenty of surprising hits that are sure to hit many people's sweet spot. And while I have enjoyed most of this year's anime, I'll be the first to admit, due to the real world's current issues that we're still facing to this day, anime has been a hit or a miss but fall made me quickly forget about that storm lurking just outside my bedroom window. Arguably the hottest new series of the season, MAPPA crafts the Dream Team and bringing to life a mixture of familiar ideas from past battle shonens, but executes them to such a degree that it leaves it feeling fresh and exciting. The world is full of curses that Jujutsu Sorcerers harness great abilities to take them down. The catch is the main character swallowed a cursed finger that makes him a liability, as the spirit that resides in him will destroy the world should he take over Yuji. By watching a blend of Mob Psycho 100 comedy meets darker themes seen in series such as Hunter x Hunter, you have this bold new entry with some of the best visual production in 2020. Every fight has something distinct about it, each punch carries weight, each joke is generally amusing. You have a talking panda that goes unexplained and we'd have it no other way. This is a tense, exciting, and worthy of all the hype that it's received so far, and honestly, probably even more. While the first season of Fire Force wasn't perfect, it was also far better than most made it out to be. With a promising cliffhanger, season 2 had the roadmap to craft something truly legendary. And with the end of the second season, I can say not only was it the best season of Fire Force, it's my personal favorite work that the original author has ever made. The fights have become more intense, both visually with David Productions' gorgeous animation that continues to elevate what fire animation can look like, but with how they're written, they feel as if they blend in with this world rather than being slapped on for a new power of the week. Characters struggle, mysteries unravel, and while there's still much more left to tell, I can't help but feel satisfied with what we've seen so far. If you've had any love for season 1, make sure you binge this gem of the season. I mean, they even gave Tamaki of all characters a decent chance to shine, which is saying something. Don Machi is an interesting beast that I originally misjudged as an overpowered hero with a harem fantasy flair to it. But when you give the series an honest-to-go shot with an open mind, the lead character Bell becomes someone not there to be an insert for the viewer, but an example of what luck truly is. Luck that eventually will run out, and the cost of saving those you care about have dire consequences if the world isn't ready for change. Season 3 introduces intelligent monsters with the constant question of do they deserve to die just because they are born like this, or is the world ready for a sort of change? There's hard-hitting themes that really make you tense up, and I can safely say after my recent binge and experience with Season 3, Don Machi has me eager for more. Rom-coms aren't the most original ideas out there, but when one has something unique to it, you best believe I'm gonna shove it down your throat. Imagine a rom-com where you get marriage within the first couple of episodes, but you need to work your way up to such aspects like hand-holding after you get married. So, on one hand, it's the fastest, but also the most slowest-paced rom-com ever, and it's brilliant for that. The comedy is on point, and every episode had multiple moments that made me chuckle as I melted and got diabetes from the sweetness this anime oozes. It's cute, visually, with its bright colors and soft character designs, and the best part is both lead characters are equally memorable. This might be the safest bet this season for something to melt you, make you laugh, and never have you roll your eyes. While Attack on Titan started late and only aired 4 episodes total in the fall season, we can't deny from episode 1 alone it deserved to be mentioned. This is my favorite story of all time. If MAPPA handled the final season correctly, this would also be my favorite anime of all time once it concludes. We're still golden. Visually, it has changed, but arguably no more than Studio Wit's jump from Season 2 to Season 3. It feels as if there's just as much passion as before, and honestly, I'd argue more. With MAPPA knowing the expectations that the fans have, and actually being a part of the production committee unlike Studio Wit was, this is clearly something meant to impress, and so far the final arc is looking rather bright. Trust me when I say it's only going to get better from here on out. Both MAPPA and WIT have had their production issues, but both really care about this source material and it shows from the quality and dedication. While this is the farthest thing from a masterpiece and technically is filled with cliches, I honestly had a fun time with Our Last Crusade. What started out as a Romeo and Juliet style war-torn love story, to then quickly become goofy adventures, to then ending back up on its initial premise, there's a charm here I can't quite put my finger on. The idea of the lead character Iska being so casual towards an enemy princess 
with her being a bit of a tsundere klutz with a heart of gold, both seeking to end this pointless conflict on both sides, provides a nice blend of drama, amazing action sequences, and hilarious moments. How the cliches are used never really feels like an eye roll, but something that, at the very worst, is mildly entertaining, but at its best can actually become something fairly unique. Give this one a shot if you want a fun action fantasy show that definitely has its fun, but also has some pretty intense moments. This one took a little bit to get going for me, but when it did, I found it to be a worthwhile experience. There's certainly some moments that blew the anime community away that were quite shocking. To me, were a little too forced and they actually needed to be. Overall, each episode had something there that was worth your time and attention, and I wouldn't say any episode was pointless in the slightest. Each episode had a journey to it, whether that's on the setup side to something more personal. A series about a wandering witch where good things don't always happen and the wee character can be blamed for those wrongdoings. It's a safe bet for a peaceful fantasy that can easily turn twisted at a moment's notice. It might not be for everyone, but the witch version of Kino's journey is something that I'm not going to be forgetting anytime soon, and I highly recommend everyone go on this journey. Out of the three webtoon anime, Noble S will be the hardest to find an audience for. You need to have watched the OVA Awakening to understand what it is essentially the second season to this show. And the back and forth of goofy high school hijinks meets Supernatural and Sandy, it's just not going to be for everyone. For myself, I quite enjoyed it. Early on, the simple interactions were harmless fun that provided decent comedy and built the relationship between Rai and his newfound friends. When the serious side took over, it was much more in line with the godly storytelling that the OVA had. While the production was the most average editor of the three webtoons, there's an old school charm that works in its favor more often than not, especially with the dry humor that its main character Rai has. I can't say this series will stay with me forever, but for now I can think back on it fondly enough that should they make more, I'm always going to be there watching. PA Works Originals are some of my most anticipated series of any given year. Whether it's workplace hijinks or drama tearjerkers, I simply enjoy them, flaws and all. Thankfully, when it comes to pacing, Jun Maida's latest project has the best structure seen yet. A girl approaches the lead Yoda, proclaiming herself to be a god and the world will end before the summer is over. You assume she's batshit crazy, but quickly, all of her predictions seemingly come true. This quickly becomes a hilarious adventure of a growing family bond and the memories they all make over a very eventful summer that unfortunately must come to an end. The twists the series takes feel well planned rather than jamming all the drama in last minute. There's a solid build up before reaching that last episode. It's both hilarious but also a drama filled adventure that really is worth everyone's time and attention. Visually the most striking show of the fall season, with set pieces I still foam at the mouth from. You know moments like the wall coming down in Attack on Titan's first episode and how they stick with you for years? This bridge fight sequence is one of those moments for me. A group of criminals all lined up with a job, with an ordinary girl pretending to be one of these Akadamas so she doesn't get herself killed, turns into a compelling mystery surrounding their boss and where they come from. There's plenty of blood and you will see some of the deaths coming, but overall it feels as if everyone is a person even if they are a psychotic mess before they meet their maker. For entertainment value alone, the visuals and sound design will hook you through and through, but the ability to turn cardboard cutouts into compelling characters, with the highlight for me being Hacker and Hoodlum, really does make this feel like one of this year's best, and even years from now, it's probably going to be one that I'm going to be recommending above all others from 2020. The biggest surprise of this season was the show I thought would be a generic My Hero Academia clone that somehow dozens ended up hounding me to watch. When I reluctantly gave in, I was blown away by this fresh take on the Death Note mind game formula that many try to utilize but generally fail as they're trying to be far too clever than they're able to be. Unlike shows such as Death Note or even Code Geass, the characters aren't perfect and openly admit to having flaws, meaning you're able to follow the cat and mouse chase well enough so when they succeed or fail you know well ahead of time why that happened. Each episode usually has a fun twist to blow you away, and while most of the characters aren't anything to write home about, the main leads are all well developed and established. I expected absolutely nothing out of this and ended up with my personal favorite show of the season. It's not the best anime, don't get me wrong, but it was the one that entertained me the most every single week and the one I always look forward to watching the most. The debate is still going on on how you should watch this. Ever since day one, I said if the creators are saying newcomers can enjoy this, then that's who I'm going to trust. And despite the cries saying how I ruined my Christmas, I enjoyed this a hell of a lot. I knew practically nothing about this new story set in the Higurashi universe, and what I got out of it will be unique to newcomers where old fans will get something equally as fascinating. You'll notice changes that weren't there from the previous anime that reshape everything, as those like myself wonder why everything is resetting as we piece together these clues in hopes to find an answer. There's one episode in particular that actually scared me, which is a first for horror anime. So the unique feelings that this anime gave me and the levels of anxiety flowing through me with each passing episode, I can say this is one of the only times a series designed for new and old fans alike actually stuck its landing and did its job. 
Sherlock Holmes is one of the most popular names in media, but I find outside of the original books, not many are really worth your time and attention. By switching the perspective over to generally the antagonist of Holmes, William James Moriarty, and putting the focus of the man aiming to rid the world of rich corruption, you get a fascinating new take on an overused name in the world of fiction. Series like Death Note and Code Geass are some of my personal favorites due to the idea of the end justifying the means, and where you fall on that question, teeter-tottering not knowing, is this right or is this wrong? But by seeing the end result being desirable. Having Holmes be the antagonist chasing down Moriarty as he kills arguably disgusting people in an attempt to bring about a social class revolution is truly gripping, especially when you back it with a brutal gothic horror aesthetic that truly frightens you when present. This is honestly one of the biggest hidden gems of the season and I can't wait to see its second core in spring of next year. Never in my wildest dreams did I think Golden Conley would see a third season, and here we are. I don't think I need to explain to any fan of the show why season 3 is worth checking out, so instead I'll make a brief to those who are new to the world of Golden Conley. This is a series that isn't able to be defined by a simple synopsis. Some episodes you might look at it as a cooking series, other a historical action adventure for the quest of a hidden gold. This season blends all the best moments of the first two seasons into a compelling adventure worthy of everyone's attention. It might be dry at certain points, but the payoff is well worth that wait in later episodes. Episodes. Everyone should watch this, not enough do in the West, and it's a shame as it's probably better than most of the series you're already checking out in any given season. It's funny, action-packed, it's historically accurate, and has characters that make you think beyond most out there. Anyone who follows the channel quickly notices that I honestly like every anime season in some way. Whether it's quality over quantity or vice versa, I have fun with anime year round. But 2020 definitely made me appreciate fall than I normally would. We take the things we enjoy for granted and assume they're always going to be there. So when nearly everything gets postponed, delayed, or the quality suffers from the real world issues, it's a great reminder that everyone is human and nothing is guaranteed. So seeing a lineup like this really does bring a giant grin to your face. If you want the heavy hitters, Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen will blow you away. If you want to be spooked, Higurashi is surely to creep you out. If you want wacky adventures, Akadama Drive is here for you. Or even a reverse relationship where marriage comes before handholding. This was truly an excellent season. Let me know your personal favorite series from this past season down in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content in the future. Also there's the Patreon if you want to see new videos before they go public. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.